As I mentioned at the beginning of Mass, we celebrate the memorial of St. Francis Xavier. He met St. Ignatius of Loyola at the University of Paris. And just reading a brief summary of his life, after a brief apostolate amongst his countrymen in Rome, he was sent by Ignatius to the Indies, where for 12 years he, he was to wear himself out, bearing the gospel to Hindostan, to Malacca, and to Japan. Thwarted by the jealousy, covetousness, and carelessness of those who should have helped and encouraged him, neither their opposition nor the difficulties of every sort which he encountered could make him, could make him slacken for his labor for souls. The vast kingdom of China appealed to his charity, and he was resolved to risk his life to force an entry when God took him to himself, and on December 2nd, 1552, he died. There is so much more to say about his life. It is reported that he probably baptized 300,000 people in his lifetime. I don't know about you, but that's a lot. I don't know how many people you baptized. But even if you thought that I baptized, you know, 50 people a year, even if I've been a priest for 10 years, you know, 11 years, that's only 550. He had a very, very fruitful life, very, very apostolic life. There's kind of an apocryphal, um, I say apocryphal just because it's, you know, scholars disagree if it uh, actually was said, but one of the things that was said, whether verbally or non-verbally, from St. Ignatius, when he sent Francis Xavier to the Indies, he said, set all afire. Set all afire. Light them up. Take that zeal that you have for the love of God and share it with those who have never heard it. In one way, the apostolic mission in an area where people have never heard the gospel is somewhat easier than when they've heard it but don't practice or heard it and rejected it, the new evangelization that we talk about. St. Uh, St. Francis Xavier reports in the reading that we have as part of the Liturgy of the Hours, part of the cycle of praying the Psalms, there's a letter that he wrote saying that he's totally exhausted because he can't even say his prayers because the children from the villages where he is run up to him and tell him to teach them another prayer or another song. He would teach the prayers through song, teach creedal statements through song. And he says, I can't even get through my bravery because they come up here and they nag me to teach them something more. He says, these people are so hungry. They haven't had a priest, but yet they've known they've been baptized or they have heard about Jesus. And so um, here he is going to these different villages and trying to help them grow and mature in their faith. You can see his arm. It's not the most sightly thing in the world, but you can see his arm on display in the Jesu church um, right off one of the main streets in Rome, uh, in, yeah, in, in the church there. Pretty amazing. The arm that baptized 300,000 um, native non-Christians. What is the catalyst for someone to have such a sense of urgency to say farewell to their homeland, to go halfway around the world, risking all sorts of things with so much discouragement, Let's go back to our gospel today, which was from the memorial of St. Francis Xavier. He says, Jesus says, Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. Jesus alone is the judge of believers and unbelievers alike. But one of the catalysts for people to take up the call to mission was because they believed that it mattered. They believed in hell. They believed that it was their responsibility to give people the fullness, fullness of the invitation to the faith so that that didn't happen to them. 
we have the belief that God is not just willy-nilly and, you know, is looking for reasons to send people to hell. We believe that God is merciful and will judge us according to how we lived, according to what we knew, with the exception of invincible ignorance. But the call to that first mission remains. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to go before my judge and have any occasion where I abdicated my call to baptismal mission to give the fullness of the gospel to every creature that led them to go to hell. Do we have both a theoretical and a practical belief in hell? Do we have not only a theoretical, but a practical belief in the great commission that Jesus gave us to go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature? And do we have just a theoretical or also a practical belief that invoking the name of Jesus drives out demons? That invoking the name of Jesus enables us to speak languages we would otherwise not know? Do we believe that if there were a serpent between me and that village, that I could go without fear, maybe even step over or on that serpent, that poisonous viper, trusting that even if it bit my heel, that I would recover if I was crossing that path for the sake of mission? Do I believe that even if the enemies, the chiefs in town that did not want me there and see me as a threat, even if they invited me to dinner and poisoned my drink, my drink that it would not harm me, that I need not fear the retaliation of those who are on the way to condemnation because they do not believe? Do I believe that in the name of Jesus, that I as a baptized Christian, meaning all of us, can lay hands on the sick and they recover in the name of Jesus? Jesus, after he said this, was taken up to heaven and went to the right hand of God but they went forth in his name and preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word through accompanying signs. I want to read again real briefly our opening prayer. O God, who through the preaching of St. Francis Xavier won many peoples to yourself, Grant that the hearts of the faithful may burn with the same zeal for the faith and that the Holy Church may everywhere rejoice in an abundance of offspring. In a talk I recently gave at a conference, I talked about how important it is for us to understand that if we are to set all aflame, if that is the mission to evangelize and we are to set others on fire, Logically, we must be on fire to one degree or another. So I just want you to, you know, consider like a self-reflection. You know, would, what would people say about you? Like genuinely, not just, what, I mean, you're a nice person. We're all nice people in this room. But what would they say about your level of engaging mission? They say, yeah, it's, you know, this, this guy's on fire. And they're like, oh, yeah, this guy's on fire. They're like, this guy's on fire. Or they say, this guy is on fire. This guy is on fire. What would they say? It's what I call the Alicia Keys test for how aflame you are. Where, where are you and where do you want to be? And be honest. Where are you and where do you want to be? Maybe more importantly, let me frame it. 
where would God say that you are, and where does God want you to be? And in this Mass, by word and by sacrament, we can pray, Lord, set my heart on fire. Set my life on fire. We all have different gifts, and it's not to say that evangelization is to put everyone in one box. Some of us are better one-on-one, -on -one, some of us better with big groups. Some of us better in supportive roles, some of us better with exhortation and with this and with that, with teaching and preaching and all sorts of stuff. But what we can't conclude is, well, that's out of my comfort zone, so I'm not going to do that. That must be for someone else. You think St. Francis Xavier stayed in his comfort zone his whole life? You think 300,000 people were baptized because he was comfortable doing that? Of course not. Yet, why do we excuse ourselves from radical steps and risks? Because it's, well, it's foreign to me, and I don't understand it, and I'm afraid. I just want to encourage us to ask, through the intercession of St. Francis Xavier, that our hearts may be set a little bit more on fire this evening, so the Lord may use us to continue to set the world on fire. Let us stand and pray. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for Bishop Bill, for all the shepherds of the church that by word and example, they can lead us to fulfill the reason for our existence to evangelize. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the baptized, that we may discover, own, and apply the spiritual gifts that God has given us in baptism and strengthened in confirmation for the work of the church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for missionaries who have taken on great sacrifices and are far from family and friends for the sake of the gospel, for their support and the fruitfulness of their work. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In this Advent season, we pray for all expectant mothers, for safe pregnancies and deliveries. We pray that our whole world in hope would choose life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For blessings upon and in thanksgiving for all foster and adoptive families for our all guardians ad litem that seek to provide for the needs of those who have chosen life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Through the intercession of St. Francis Xavier, we pray for the fruitfulness of the mission in our area, for the Encountering Christ retreat this weekend, for our upcoming Advent mission a week from now, for the fruitfulness of our penance services, for abundant conversion at the Holy Spirit night this Sunday, for fruits of physical and spiritual and emotional healing at our upcoming healing night, the third Thursday. Let us pray to the Lord. 